Hello. Now, I've had to switch to my phone because my laptop decided the camera didn't want to work. So let me just figure out somewhere to put you. There we go. Okay, cool. So, dehydrating your dog's wages. Um, some of the most high value stuff that you can have for your dog is actually raw meat, but that's not so easy to carry around with you. Hi, Ruby. I hear I'm on Ruby's big screen, which is not at all scary. Um, but let's get balls deep in dehydrating. So I've got um, some stuff already in the dehydrator so that I can show you kind of stages as it goes along. Because um, like, for example, testicles, they're very, very watery. So you have to do them semi-defrosted and there's kind of a perfect sweet spot that's it's a bit of experimenting. Um, to find out how long that is in your own house, venue, etc. I've never actually dehydrated willies here at my unit before. So it shall be interesting. Not willies, testicles, sorry. So when you get your testicles, this is a pig's one. Um, you can get lambs, cows, etc. But the pigs are probably easier to come by. Um, what you'll get is two together and they're attached by this section of fat, basically. So we have to get that off. Now it's also attached to the first layer of outer skin and it is a little bit of an effort, but if you find a spot so that you can actually get to cutting it, you can then get your finger in to rip it off. Ooh. And this is why I did a load of them before I came on live because it takes a while. Sharp knives, of course, are a must. And for some stupid reason, I only bought two of mine with me, but there we go. Hey Magda. <laughs> so there's the first bit off. Always have a scraps lid pot or something around. Easier to put in that and then put into your food recycling or whatever you put it into. Um, probably not something for the compost heap at, at best guess. Can't imagine it'd smell too good. So we've got the main bit off and then we've got this bit here. I can't remember what it's called, but we need to get that off. So hole in the skin, separate it out as much as you can and it is just making a slit with your sharp knife. Now the skin is quite tough, there we go, to get it off. And then it starts moving around and makes it difficult to grip. Also worth mentioning, you really, really, really wanna have a bowl of hot water close when you're dealing with semi-frozen because suddenly your fingers go numb and you need to dunk them for like two seconds just to defrost your own fingers. So. We're getting this bit off here. You can see that it's completely extra to the testicle. This is the bit that we actually want. So it's just a case of ripping it off, using knives, scissors, whatever you need to, to do it. This is actually at the perfect state of defrosting. I can kind of tell there's a little bit of give in the skin. I don't know if you can see it close up. So there's a little bit of give in the skin, but the rest of it's all solid. That helps with you cutting your slices to make testicle crisps. Ooh. There we go. So to get the next bit off, because we've still got this bit here attached, which is the blood supply basically to the testicle. Oh, Ruby, I need a picture of your dad as he comes in and sees this, please. <laughs> so little slit in this next layer of skin again, because obviously these are very, very protected with the animal, pulling it off. Then we are literally going to get our big old knife and chop off the end. Now, when you're chopping the testicles, you actually want it to be quite thick because of the water content. They thin out really, really quickly. So then you get to the inside of the testicle. They are different colors, depending on what your animal's been fed and what um, species they are. So now I've got that end off, I can rip off that last layer of skin and I'm left with just the inner bit. Put that to one side and then I'm trying to get the rest of it off. This is the bit where it gets quite difficult because you've now got the slippier inside. Slide your knife up the inside. Giggling at testicle, Chris. Yes, everyone giggles at them. They're my dog's favorite. I don't do them very often because um, they're a bit of a kerfuffle. The main thing with testicles in your dehydrator is that if you have a dehydrator with a fan at the bottom, um, don't do testicle, Chris is my biggest piece of advice. I did that with my first dehydrator. Um, and flooded the thing, took ages to dry out so I couldn't dehydrate for ages. I will show you my two dehydrators I've got here today, which are both back fan dehydrators. The amount I dehydrate, I have to have the quality now, basically. So we're nearly off with this skin. 
another slit there and then it just peels off super super easy Ugh, she was saying there we go so last bit some testicles have um when you've taken the skin off like a little tail that sticks out the center doesn't do anything really harmful when you dehydrate i always cut it off because it makes it look neater and i have ocd so now you'll see that by doing that it's so much easier to get your slices and you can see i'm kind of doing them at like a centimeter thick because i know they'll thin out i'll show you the ones that are already in the dehydrator in a minute because i need to get these in before they defrost anymore that's when they get harder to handle and they end up sliding on the floor. So, nearly there. And you can see it's starting to slide around on my cutting board already, which makes it all the more difficult. But that shows you how quick they do defrost because they are basically 100% water. Well, they're not 100% because they're testicles, but you know what I mean. Right, so, dunking hands. Dry it off just to make it a little bit easier to handle and put in the dehydrator. So this is my Bio Chef. Get it on the screen. So I've got all metal trays in there and I've got one that's slipped down. There's your first dick pick. Um, so yeah, I've got ears in there already. I've already got some testicles. Um, and you can see how they look so much different from the frozen ones and the water content coming out. I've deliberately put them on the bottom shelf um, because as that liquid comes out, if anything comes out of the drip tray before I get to empty it, I've got a cloth there to catch it so I don't end up with um, testicle juice all over the worktop. So, to do the testicle crisp, we always line it with a Teflon sheet. Um, the reason I use Teflon is because it's a hell of a lot easier and it can go in the dishwasher, wipes down a lot easier, and um, sometimes baking paper can actually... <laughs> Uh, sometimes baking paper can actually um, end up sticking to your things and then you've ruined what you've dehydrated. So, it is just simply putting them on here. Now, the two that are already on here are already sliding around, a little bit like jelly. Nobody's having jelly for dinner now. Um, and they've only been in, what, about 20 minutes? And they were in this state. It is, they're the bits of the other testicle from this pair. So, laying them out. And I tend to do it fairly close together because I'll space them out once they finish defrosting. And that's our testicles in. Now, some people with the testicles, well, not some people with testicles, um, some people dehydrating testicles will kind of block with a cloth or kitchen paper as they go in. Um, I don't do that. I wait until I've got kind of a, a bit of a skin on the edge. We will talk where to get them from in a second. Helen, I can barely see names because I've had to do this on my phone. Um, so yeah, I prefer to leave a leave them until we get a bit of a skin. It helps them grip more to the sheet and it also makes it a little bit easier for flipping them. Because yes, you have to flip them, otherwise you end up with one side crispy and one side a little bit kind of, well, it doesn't look the same and it looks really weird to me. Um, so getting testicles. I got these ones from The Dog's Butcher and Henley Raw. Um, I did a order with Henley Raw for my willies, which are coming up next, um, and testicles and a few other bits, literally after I put the event up, while I was still on the phone to Ruby. Um, they arrive within two days, so it's really nice and quick. I also have a raw shop local that has so much variety, and if I can't find it somewhere, she'll see if she can get it um, direct from her supplies because obviously she buys from them regularly so yeah any questions on testicles before we move on to willies the main event <laughs> no questions it's willy time so i have prepped some willies already some are already in some are already done so this is what your pizzle looks like before it's dehydrated when it's all trimmed up um, but it starts like this. This is a pretty clean one. It's got a big chunk of fat um, on it. I've got another one with another chunk of fat. It is what it is. Um, some of them come bunched up with the fat. Some of them don't. It varies depending on obviously size of animal and where it's been butchered. So 
To do your willies, you have to get that fat off. Fat in the dehydrator will kill your machine. Well, it, it won't, but it'll kill everything else in there and that's just something that nobody wants to do. So I'm gonna slip through because this bit of fat goes all the way around. And then I find the easiest ways with scissors. And this is where everyone kind of winces and knows why I'm single. So getting it off, literally hold it up. You'll see the thin bit of skin chopping and pull and chop. Maybe hand down to do it until you get to the end or get flinged in the face like that. There you go. There's an awesome bit for YouTube, Ruby. Okay, so we've got a little bit more. You can see now compared to the, the state that it kind of is in to begin with, we're getting the clearer bit. Or well, hopefully you can see that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Joys of the internet. Okay, so the, the, the kind of thin skin is actually really sticky. Yeah, I know. You can um, die laughing at that one, Ruby. <laughs> it does stick to everything. Your scissors, your hands, and it makes it difficult to move your way up. But if you just keep chopping, even around the head... It just takes off. I don't know what's going on with my internet. Sorry, I will try to pause whenever I notice it. So, we're up at the head. We've now got extra skin up there. Yes, I said it. Chopping that off. Done. Now, some of them have an extra, well, it's not extra, a little um, tunnel. I don't know which part of it is. I did go, my internet for some reason is being stupid and, and drop out, I don't know. But um, yeah, there's a tiny little tube on this one. The other one that I've got to prep on live for, you might have a thicker one. Sometimes they have one, sometimes they have two. It just really depends on literally the age of the animal, how formed they are. So trimming that off, you, you can leave it on if you want to. I just like to trim it off because then I get your willy. It's great when you have a box of willies arrive on your door and the delivery driver asks you what's in it. He's like, why is this refrigerated? I'm like, oh, it's a box of this. He makes a swift exit. Don't blame him. Okay, so there's another bit of that tube. So just flipping me willy round. And trimming it off. Sticky, get off me. Uh, checking for any more skinny chews this was obviously a young bull no no more there cool sorry john no i'm not sorry that was a lie but i tried i tried we're, we're on the last willy if that helps although you might want to like come back in a couple of minutes because i'm going to chop them in half soon cool so next one this one has the fat at the base again so it's not wrapped round so just going to quickly chop that bit off makes it so much easier to handle then aha yeah this so this one's got two really thick tubes not sure if you can see it very easily um i'm gonna try and take them off together because you can kind of see all the way up the shaft um that they're really close to each other one i did earlier god that's a blue peter moment and a half um they were kind of literally opposite sides of the penis so I had to do them individually. We'll see what happens. There we go. So we've got that side cleaned up nice and easy. Getting the sticky stuff off this side. You can see they're actually super easy to prepare. Everyone thinks they're really complicated. And sometimes when you get ones that look really covered in fat, it makes it look more difficult as well. It's not, it's the same. It's all super easy to do. And this way, if you dehydrate your own pizzles, you can actually choose the lengths. I have plaited them before. I plait them regularly um, because I'm into weird shit now. Um, because I like to do stuff that mixes it up for my dogs. This time I'm not plaiting any because I want as much dehydrator space to show you as much as I can. So, a little bit more fat there on the tip. Get off my finger again. And that one is all prepped and ready. Now, I do different lengths of um, 
biology lessons at school weren't this interesting. I'm glad I can be that entertaining for you. Um, choosing the size that you uh, dehydrate them to. So willies don't really shrink that much in the dehydrator. They'll shrink in girth, but they won't shrink in length really. So I mix it up and I've got some in already that are half length. Now this is where you need a really sharp pair of scissors and you do need to do this with scissors because if you do it with a knife, it'll slip around and you'll end up cutting a finger. Then you won't know what's to go in the dehydrator and what's not. So fold it in half and it's literally saw in action with your scissors. And I'll slop them back in there for a minute. Then I've got three here that I'm gonna do in shorter lengths. So I wanna do this one in kind of three, measure it up, bend, cut. And then this one can just go in half. Ruby, does your internet keep kicking out as well? Is there something going on worldwide at the minute? And Magda, you keep popping out and popping in, both of you. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay. So when you put these in the dehydrator, you can do them any which shape you want. A lot of the ones that you'll buy in the shops or from JR or Finer by Nature, wherever, already dehydrated, they tend to be straight. And I don't know whether that's because they hang them, which I could do because I have a beast of a dehydrator, or whether it's just how they lay them out on the tray. No idea. So this one's a slightly longer one. Now it's the last whole one. So you know what it's time for, right, Ruby? Make sure you're on line for this. It's helicopter time. Just gonna dunk my hands so I can switch round the angle of the camera. Oh, the things that I do for you, Rubes. We shouldn't have conversations at 2 a.m. because that's when dangerous stuff like this happens. Ready? It's a great way to scare off your kids' friends from wanting to come uh, round to yours. You can send your kids off to uh, other houses for a change just by helicoptering willies at their friends. It's, it's great. Not that I've done that, of course. Okay, so get the last one prepped. Or do we want more helicoptering before I uh, cut it? Heart reactions for more helicoptering. Any more helicoptering? Three, two, one. Okay, we're cutting. We've got more to do. You just have to watch that bit on replay over and over again if you want to see it. And if you are on TikTok, you can see a whole video of me doing that. Okay. That is our willies chopped. So I shall put them in the dehydrator. I'm just gonna wipe over the cutting board and things, clean myself up because I'm not doing beef on the next run. So if I was doing beef, I wouldn't clean up so much in between, but when I'm doing different proteins, I, uh, I make sure I've cleaned in between because although my dogs don't have a problem with it, if somebody was to pick something up from my box of goodies at classes, then uh, I don't know whether their dogs have any allergies, so I'm just trying to be safe. Um, what you may not know is when it comes to dog treats, you're not actually legally allowed to even gift anything um, that isn't in original packaging from somebody who's already tested it. However, if my clients happen to pick something up because they want something, <laughs> it's actually pink, Magda. Um, but yeah, if my clients happen to pick something up at a class because they want something high value and I'm not looking, I can't do anything about that. So I just try to play it as safe as I can. Cool. I will put them in the dehydrator in a second. I wanna get the sprats on. Sprats I always do from frozen or semi-frozen. Same with white fish, which unfortunately I couldn't get white fish. Um, but this is Kaiser Brink. This is from my local raw shop. Been on standby. Um, yeah, so they are frozen little fishes. Um, I also have a variety of Teflon sheets. So I have a completely smooth one, which is what I put things like um, the testicles on and then, and lung, things like that. And then for things like fish, um, I'll put it on one of these kind of mesh ones. So which dehydrator shall I use? Let's use you. Right, let's get me willies on then quickly. Not on that shelf. Get in there. That one. So we'll put these on. 
get them out of the way. God, Pringle's gonna enjoy that one. It was rather huge. It also doesn't matter when you put um, Pizzle in the dehydrator, whether it's touching or not, because it's really easy to separate if you want to after. God, the things that I'm saying that I never thought I'd say on live, saying it in person is completely different, right, Rubes? Okay. Uh, we're gonna have a wiggly one. We're gonna have some S-shaped ones, and we're gonna have some straight ones. Wibbly wobbly sexy wexy, that's what we call them. In we go. Right, so, tray out my dehydrator next to me and my sheet on it. Sprats are only for my dog, so I'm not bothered that I've actually got a little bit of blood drips off, um, well, myoglobulin um, onto the tray liner there, but it really is as simple as just chopping them up. Yeah, I'm gonna chop fish on camera. So, while I'm doing this, perfect time, if anyone has any questions, and I have to remember that there's a delay in those questions. So, what questions we got, peoples? Anything? Ruby, don't write me an essay. I can hear you typing from here. I should have done really was put out for questions for anyone who wasn't able to make it live so that we had some to fill the time while you guys thought of any or typed them out or whatever anything no not oh there's one I dehydrate liver, what thickness should I do? So, I actually have some liver here that we'll do in a bit. Um, but the answer is, whatever the hell you feel like. I tend to do mine in cubes, and if I can catch it at the right state of defrosting and I'm at home, I will use my handheld nicer dicer to cube it up into smaller bits, just because it makes it easier for me. Um, less intensive with the scissors, and also it gives me kind of more uniform treats. I always buy my liver pre-sliced, so it comes all I'll show you in a minute because I've got fish on my hands. Um, but it comes pre-sliced in the packet for me. Um, I don't buy the cubed stuff or the whole, well, I have bought whole and that's why I now buy sliced. Um, this one is from the dog's butcher. Most of the stuff that I get for dehydrating is dog's butcher or Henley's. Um, it really just, what it, whoever's got it and whoever's got the cheapest price or the most stock, because if I'm buying willies, for example, then um, I want to get them all in one go and do them all in one go. If I can have a dehydrator full of willy, then that makes more sense for me. Um, so I just tend to go with whoever's got the most stock. And if they have, if they've both got kind of low stock, I'll order from both. It all depends. Uh, can they eat raw sprouts? Yes, raw sprouts, oily fish, um, really, really good. And you, again, you can feed them frozen or not. Um, they usually are in the reduced sections at supermarkets, I'm not gonna lie. Morrison's, they usually buy too many fish and uh, end up putting a load in the reduced section. So finding your local Morrison's, we kind of have a circuit because each Morrison's puts stuff reduced at different times and different days. So we go round certain ones on certain days to get the stuff. Um, obviously the later you go, the more likely you are to get a better price, however, if you happen to be near to me, I can guarantee I'll have got there before you. <laughs> uh, how long do the willies last for? Again, it's an it depends, dog trainer's favorite answer. Um, if I do one of my plaited ones um, with my now 19 month old collie, he can get through that in about four hours. Um, if my other dogs with the plaited willies, same sizing, um, they take a good couple of days because they start and stop and just do it whenever they want it so yeah it, it also depends on the thickness of it um the short ones so i've got some really short ones here because i've got a 16 week old puppy so i've got some really short ones here they're probably about five inches um they will last him probably a good five hours because again he'll start and stop if i gave that to pringle it'd be gone in under 10 minutes um, really does depend on your dog. 
No more questions at the minute. Okay, right, I'm just gonna space these out and see. Now, most people, when they're dehydrating, they like to make it look all pretty and organized, and I used to be that person, and then I started bulk dehydrating because I got more dogs. And now I kind of just stack it up and let it do its thing. So, I've done about half the bag there, and it has about two thirds filled my tray. Oh God, I've got blood on my laptop. Thank God I've got a protective sleeve on it. Um, so yeah, I just keep chopping and doing it. If I wanted to chop even smaller, I'd chop them in half, depending on the size of the dog. But these are kind of my jackpot treats because they're really nice and smelly for taking out. Um, also, everything that I dehydrate, my dogs are raw fed, so it forms part of their diet. If you are doing it in that way, you have to remember to take a section of their raw out, otherwise you're gonna end up with a fat dog. Nobody wants a fat dog. So, da 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 da. Nearly there. Normally I have my son helping me dehydrate. It forms part of his home education and he'll be standing chopping. However, he's at home with the dogs today, so can he help? Any more questions that we've got? Can be about anything, doesn't have to just be about what we've done so far. Come on, Ruby. I know you've got one burning inside of you to come out. Actually, I'm gonna ask a favor of you. Can somebody give me a 10 minute warning when we're close to like five o'clock? Cause I kind of get in the zone and I still talk to myself anyway when I'm dehydrating. So that's why this is kind of normal for me and I can do it with my anxiety. Um, but yeah, I'll get in the zone and I'll forget what time it is and I'll just carry on talking and uh, not everyone wants to see that. Like poor John who had to disappear when he came on and saw actual willies being chopped up. Don't think he actually took this title seriously, bless him. Whereas some of you were just here because I said that there'd be willies. Any more questions? Right, that's that tray done. I could probably fit a few more on, but I know I'm gonna to have to use a second tray for the rest of the bag. How do I store it once I've dehydrated? Um, so my willies is things like that, which is we're gonna do next. Um, anything like that, I store in a massive kilner jar that I can just kind of chuck it in. I've also used, um, these are two kilo treat tubs from Finer by Nature that have um, grain-free fish or grain-free um, poultry treats in. Um, I have used them for putting chews in because it's nice and easy for me to transport around with me. Um, little bits like the sprats, they will go in a kilner jar or if I'm not going to use them all um, kind of within a week depending on how much dehydrating I'm doing, I will put them, I've got a vacuum sealer so I'll vacuum seal them to help them last. Um, I haven't actually done the test of how long do things last because I don't tend to keep it around for that long. But I have had people that um, have had stuff dehydrated and it's lasted for a good three months. So long as it's airtight and nothing can get to it and you have got as much fat off for the things that have fat on, then you tend to be okay with um, storage. The fat will add moisture because it can't fully dehydrate. Right, we're gonna go into this dehydrator with the other one. Actually, let's think about this properly, Laura. Let's put something else in here, out the way, and then I've got more shelves in the little dehydrator. Just move me ears. Oh, that one's curled up, squish it out. Can you move the camera so we can, oh, sorry. I put it back in the wrong place, didn't I? My bad. That better? Thumbs up if it's better. Ruby just wants all the gruesome details, that's all. Is that it, Rubes? Is that a better angle? Yeah, cool, awesome. So yeah, I'm just moving the ears into the bigger dehydrator just to give me more space to put the fish in here because I don't want the fish kind of smell leaking into what I'm dehydrating in there. In here it doesn't matter because it's kind of all cartilage stuff that I've got in here. Other than the uh, testicles, of course. 
Yeah. Again, with ears, which, as I said, we're going on to next, I don't actually worry about them being kind of stacked up or spaced out or anything. Just get them on the tray. Right, stick that one in here. Oh, throw an ear on the floor. Finish off this fish, then we can move on to the ears. Is there anyone in the USA here? I'm not sure where I would get raw willy. So in the USA, I see in um, the worldwide raw groups on Facebook that they tend to get it from um, the Asian markets. However, I don't know what raw companies you got over there. It may be worth dropping them a message. Even your butchers. First time I got Pizzle before I knew of all the companies was from my butcher. He just got it delivered with whatever um, abattoir he was getting a delivery from that day. I can't read the rest of your comment either, I'm afraid, Gillian. It's not letting me see more. Right, any more questions? Because I'm nearly done with the sprats. Oh, also, actually, with the sprats, some people dehydrate them whole which is fine, and that's how you tend to get them if you buy them already dehydrated from um, Hollings or whatever. I don't like doing them whole. I'm not gonna, hi, Nita. I don't like doing them whole because when you do them whole, they tend to curl in the dehydrator. Um, the only way that you can get them to not curl is by using lots of paper clips and basically hooking inside here and hooking it to the shelf of your dehydrator. So I just, uh, it's too faffy for me. I'm like, I want to get it in and get it done. What's the Raw Food Facebook group? Um, there's Raw Feeding UK. No, sorry. Raw Feeding Advice and Support, because we don't want the UK groups. Um, there's a couple of others. If you type in Raw Feeding on the search bar, it'll bring you up ones. Obviously, don't join the ones in the UK because they're not going to be any help for you. Um, but there's so many you might even find a um local farmer that if you buy them a bottle of whiskey and ask them for anything um that can't go to market normally because some smaller farmers will get the uh butchering done and then deliver back to them so they can sell from them like farm shops and things or some of them have it done on site in the uk anyway i'm not 100 percent sure on the us so worth calling around and let us know because then it will help other people that are watching this on catch up um why are you hiding away where have you been you're such an, a natural yeah okay anita it's only because i'm handling weird things and it makes me comfortable to be laughed at so laugh away people <coughs> my knowledge is only as vast as it is because i've been doing this for years I have learned many things over the years of doing it, and it is trial and error. Um, I've got jerky guns at home for when I want to mix things and make like um, treat sticks that I can snap, a, snap up while I'm walking around or give to, a, give to one of them for a long chew. I've got so many different molds, which we will show you in a minute. Um, there's molds that I have got and they have been sold on because they're just next to useless, even though some people like them. For me, I don't like them, so I get rid. No point in sitting in the cupboard not getting used. Although there's some really pretty ones that sit in the cupboard not getting used and hopefully at some point I will find something to do with them, whether it's for the dogs or humans, doesn't bother me. Nearly there, last few. Any more questions? Ask around. No worries, Gillian. It, it's hard when it's different countries because I can't give you the exact precise like information on where to go but i have seen plenty of people in the us getting hold of it there is also which might help you um a dehydrated dog treats group on facebook um if you go in there and search my name you will see tons of random things that i've dehydrated i've made lollies out of pig skin and meat in heart shapes and all sorts of weird stuff um but yeah in there there's people from all over the world so they'll be able to help point you in the right direction as well last couple and then we can get this in 
and move on. So, with the fish, I will show you in a second where it's been sat on my cutting board, deliberately on my cotton board because I don't want um, my worktop to smell like fish. Um, dunking scissors, dunking hand. Um, yeah, so I've got some minuscule um, fish scales and that's simply because the fish is defrosting as I'm cutting it. Fish defrost really, really fast. Literally, I got this out of the um, freezer just before I came on the live. I put it in the fridge earlier because, well, it wasn't going to defrost any in there really. And then um, got it out. So, we haven't used knives for this. And then, so you can see maybe, possibly, if my shadow's not in the way. I don't know, trying to get the camera angle. You see like some little bits of fish scales and that's just because it's defrosting as it goes, but that's why I cut it uh, while it's frozen or majority frozen. It just makes things 10 times easier for me handling. Okay. So, next up we have ears. Can we still see when I've put the phone back? Cool. So I have a pig's ear here for you. I just have a lamb's ear. I've chosen the kind of trampiest lambs ear out the packet to show you the worst that they can come in. So sometimes we have some of the fur fleece stuff still on there. It's cool. You can dehydrate it if you really want to. I'm not so bothered about that because I've got fur on the ear. You can buy these with and without fur. Um, I like the lambs ears with fur because it's harder to get rabbit's ears with fur. So it adds a little bit of an extra texture for my dogs. Um, literally all I'm going to do with the lambs ear is cut off all that excess so at the base of the ear this bit's called the oracle you get quite a big layer of fat that's the bit that you need to come off because like i said before fat just kind of melts it doesn't dehydrate and then you end up with mold there is still movement in the ear and that's just the cartilage and the bit little bit of meat in there but there's no fat really left on a couple of little bits and as you see it just chop it off and get rid um and that one is done all i've got to do is wash it now same with rabbit's ears as well, actually. I just couldn't get any to do some on the live with you. So, pig's ears, they're really, really waxy, really thick. And once you've dehydrated your own pig's ears for the first time, you will know um, what a real dehydrated pig's ear is. If you are in the UK, can't speak for anywhere else, and you're going to certain well-known uh, pet shops, you'll see that they have loose pig's ears for sale that are really thin. They're not real pig's ears. Um, what I'll do is once this is finished, dehydrating it, because this will all be done by the morning, I'll take a picture of the finished thing so you can see the difference. Then you'll know what ones are real pig's ears and what ones are made out of rawhide. And um, yeah, we don't, don't want to feed that, it, but it's cheap for them to make and they can market it that way. So with the pig's ear, we're going to cut off the oracle. It is tough to get through, which is why I have nice big strong scissors, cutting an arc, whatever you want to do. Um, now with the pig's ear, sometimes I cut it into strips, sometimes I'll cut it in half, sometimes I'll leave it whole. I've already done some in strips because I got a little bit happy and got in the zone earlier prepping. So this one's gonna stay whole. And again, I'm gonna wash that in a minute. So the oracles, there is no reason to waste it. Use every bit that you can out of what you get. This is the bit though that is a bit fiddly and a bit of an arse, I'm not gonna lie. I tend to save them up and do um, like a bulk load of them. <laughs> no, Anita, we don't want to. So you can see the um, layer of actual cartilage there, but there is fat on here because you've got all the fat from obviously the bit where it's attached to the scalp. So we're just going to cut off as much as we can and you do get a feel for what's the cartilage part of the oracle and what's um, like a thick layer of fat. There's also a little bit of cartilage here and that again is where it's attached to the head, but it's not actually attached to the oracle. So don't worry about cutting that off you will feel it with your um, fingers as you're doing it. So that's got a load of it off already. Really easy with pig's ears as well because you've got the skin, you can really grab onto it and move it out. The more defrosted pig's ears are and cow's ears, um, the easier it is to do the oracle. Whereas um, with the main bit of the ear, it doesn't really matter whether it's semi-frozen or defrosted, it's just the oracles that it really helps if they're fully defrosted. So I've got all the skin off and you can kind of see there that there's quite a bit of fat left on. That's because it's where it touches to the scalp and there's a lot of fat on the head. 
Oracles are a weird shape, so you really have to pull against the scissors, keep them small, a small gap, sorry, to um, get right in the crevice. So you don't know if you can see the weird shape, so I've just cut out all that bit of fat in there. There will be little bits of meat left on, don't worry about it. It's just gonna dehydrate, it's not gonna do any harm. It doesn't have to be just cartilage. So having a feel around, you can see, well, hopefully you can see, there's bits that move, that's the fat and not the cartilage, so that tells me I've gotta get that bit off. Some people do this with a knife, however, I am not that stupid to put a knife that close to my fingers. Um, I have some fairly good knife skills from doing this, but I'm still not going to risk it because of how sharp the knife needs to be to get through the um, skin. So we've got a bit here that is a bit of meat, um, but it has fat around it, so I could leave it on. In all honesty, my dogs are probably going to get these straight out of the dehydrator. Um, so it doesn't really matter about them hanging around with any fat on, but I don't want the fat dripping off onto everything else in the dehydrator. So just trim off as much as you can. And this is, you can really see how it helps that it's defrosted. Now, I wish I had a frozen one here so that you can see kind of how difficult it is. But because it's defrosted, I can pull the fat right out from the cartilage and bend the um, cartilage to where I need it to be to get it off with the scissors. And again, a little bit like the willies, really. Once you, st once you kind of get in behind a bit, you can kind of just pull and cut. Makes it so super easy. Um, I will quickly talk about the normal things that people dehydrate, like chicken breast, bits of beef, like that sort of thing. Um, really super simple to prep. You don't have to worry about really taking much off so long as you've got fatless chicken, um, fatless beef. But it all depends on what you've got uh, there we go right so that one's done with the oracles um, you can see the ear hole um, with the oracles I always cut down that hole because if it were to get stuck in my dog's throat because they were too eager or anything I know it's going to flex um, open with the saliva rather than it potentially getting stuck in their um, esophagus so rinsing them off you want fairly warm water to make sure you get all the wax and with things with fur on um you can sometimes get like blood in the fur from obviously being butchered it's one of those things i don't think i can take you over to the sink safely without me risking dropping my phone in the water so you just hopefully you can kind of see from there let me move them out of the way maybe that'll help twist you around a bit see if we can do it no it doesn't want to stretch that far um there ish maybe kind of so, literally boiling up water, cool it down a little bit just so you can actually hold your hand under it, but you need the heat to melt the wax, and it's literally just scrubbing it off. Sometimes I will dry these with a tea towel um, after I've rinsed them, but today I'm going to do it the lazy way and not bother. So, uh, with the lamb's ears, I don't cut down the oracle with them. There is a reason for that. I'm lazy, no. Um, the reason I don't cut down the oracle with the lamb's ears is because it's such a, a, so much smaller compared to the pig's ear. You can really see the size difference and the little tiny hole that there is, it's really not gonna get, risk getting stuck. So, lamb's ears in, oracle in, pig's ear in. The pig's ears, um, I advise squishing them down and having a tray on top to help hold it in place while it starts dehydrating, same with the oracles. Um, it helps them keep a lower shape and means that you don't end up dragging out everything when you actually come to empty in the dehydrator. Right, rinse that off. Pringle will enjoy that later. Okay, so next up, do we want lung or liver? Vote, 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 vote. Lung or liver? I'll have a drink while I wait for the comments to actually come in because of the delay. Liver, first vote. So that we're not waiting around. Okay, so as I was saying, with the liver, I buy it sliced already um 
yeah, we've got two livers and one lung, so we're going with liver because we haven't got loads of time, obviously, to hang around as well. Um, so yeah, I buy it already sliced. Um, you do get little bits of fat, sinew stuff on. Just the easiest thing to do is just chop them off straight away. Now, I'm going to do this by hand because I'm stupid and left my nicer dicer at home. Um, but I'm quite happy with the thickness that they've already butchered this piece at. Um, so, oh, there's another bit of sinew. Um, some people will do this with a knife. Some people like to do it semi-frozen. Some people like to do it raw. I normally do it raw. This is semi-frozen, so bits of it are completely defrosted and the center's kind of getting there. Um, I just find it easier, in all honesty, to do it raw, completely raw and defrosted. It's a bit easier for me to handle, but literally chopping sections when I'm doing it by hand and I do follow the curve of the thing, the, the thing, the liver. Um, you will get bits of liver that have kind of lobes coming off them. I tend to chop them off, which I will show you how with the lung, because they kind of are the same, but it's a different texture. Simples. Uh, with liver, I always put it on one of my solid Teflon sheets um, until it gets that skin on the top, which takes hour, hour and a half. Um, reason I do that is because I don't like it seeping through my tray. Um, right, so we've got a slightly thicker piece here with a little lobe, so chop the lobe off. Chopping that in half so it's dealt with, kind of makes the big main bit easier to handle. Um, now this bit that's half thick and half kind of a nice thickness, that bit is still frozen, so hold it sideways and get your scissors in there. You could try it with a knife, but in all honesty, once it's started defrosting, it's a little bit harder to do, but it's also impossible to do when it's frozen, is what it is. Cool, so there's our thicker bit off. Don't worry about them being uniform size unless you really want them to be. Um, part of the variety of um, life and how high that jackpot reward is. Depends on the size of your food anyway, or how much food you're giving. Um, it's completely up to you. With the liver, I have known people that blend it up and spread it across a Teflon sheet and then snap it up afterwards. It's bloody messy. Um, so I don't do it. Yes, it's easier for people to snap and make their own size treats, but it's just really messy. So I don't do it. Here we go. We've got another lobey one. So again, chopping off that lobe. Deal with that first. Some people also put it in as it is in kind of sticks and then snap it up later. If you dehydrate liver properly, um, it, it's hard to snap. And if you try and do it with a knife, once it's dehydrated, it kind of sends bits flying everywhere. Um, right, we've got another thick bit here. So to keep it simple because it's on a bit of an angle, I'm just chopping it at a weird angle. Again, doesn't matter what shape it is, your dog doesn't care. Uh, nearly there. I don't actually use liver that much in um, my dog's wages um, because they get it in their raw. So rather than me having to separate it out in their raw mix, I make sure I give kind of awfulless feeds. I just don't really use liver all that much, or if I do, I'll make it into a liver cake because it reduces the um, offal content technically, um, and I don't end up with black poos. Um, another thing worth remembering, if you don't know, is if your dog has too much offal, whether that be dehydrated in their raw or whatever, you get a lovely black poo. Um, so you know you need to kind of slack off the offal for a little bit. And if it is your dog's highest value reward, make sure you've got something else for if that happens in your back pocket. So I've got another thick piece. This is actually an edge piece of the liver, which is why it's a bit thicker. So just chopping that in half again and chopping it down. Uh, there we go. Last piece. So again, we've got an end piece. It's thicker. Um, it's literally like the tip of a liver and I'm just going to put it flat and chop through another reason why we like big scissors to do things like this. So, da, 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 da. right, what are we doing for time? How are we doing for time? Somebody give me a time check because I can't actually see the time and that'll tell me whether I carry on doing the liver right now or whether we move on to lung. I'll carry on chopping while we wait. Somebody give me a time check, please. Anyone, what 
what's the time? Four fifty-one. Cool. So that's my ten-minute check. God, we're going to run out of time, and I've still got so much to do. Okay, maybe we'll do a part two. Do we fancy a part two? Or Ruby, shall I just carry on and we do it longer than an hour? Tell me what to do, Ruby. Waiting on Ruby. I thought I actually managed to prep enough that it wouldn't take up too much time dehydrating, but this is how I get lost in time because I kind of enjoy doing it. It's a little bit of a zone out for me. Still doing something for my dogs, but, um, kind of makes me happy it's weird i didn't used to actually like chopping up animal pieces even a chicken i don't even eat meat on the bone can't do it freaks me out um you'll see as well that with the liver and uh, let me see if i can do this at a better angle scooch over so with the liver and the chunks that i've got it in i'm not being uniform with the size mixing it up because in all honesty i will probably leave this in the cupboard for an emergency thing ruby are you still here Am I still on your TV or is your dad made it you turn it off? But yeah, just random chunks. And then I'll pile it all up on the dehydrator tray. And um, once it's got that skin, flip it again. I do it kind of like the sprats and I'll pile it up. It's already in chunks. So once it's dehydrated because it's already in chunks, it's quite easy to just sit and snap it apart. No, Ruby must have gone. Ruby's gone AWOL. Well, okay, what we will do is finish up on the liver and I shall drop Ruby a message and maybe we'll do a second live instead of continuing on because I think a message will get to her easier. Um, and either I can do it today or I can wait and do it tomorrow or whatever. Because we've still got ligaments to go, we've still got lungs, we've still got hair, kangaroo, venison and rabbit. Um, and we've got all the moulds and things still to go. God, I'm good at time management, huh? Okay, I'll leave this and I'll try and cram something else in quickly. Finish this strip. Okay, I'm going to leave those scissors in there. I'm going to rinse my hands. Uh, that's the one thing with liver is you do tend to get the juice build up really um, quickly on your hands and it dries really quickly as well. So I've rinsed that out so that I can put the liver cute strips in there for me to finish off after. Put you back there. Rinsing again. Cloth. Where do you get kangaroo from? So the kangaroo is from Kaiserbrink, comes already pre-minced. Um, okay, let's do a quick vote. Do we want to do trachea, lungs, or the meat in silicon moulds in case we don't actually get to do a part two and I have to just post clips? What do you want to do, guys? Da 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 da. Yeah, I, I literally, I go, and if I'm not sure if something will dehydrate, I just get it and try it. And um, there's certain things that I have learned not to do. So pheasant, salmon, um, pigeon, quail, they tend to be quite greasy. So I don't dehydrate them because it's just, a, it's, they're easy to dehydrate, but because of the grease, it fills up your dehydrator um, really, really quickly if it overflows in the process. Um, so we've got, is that trachea's pat? And we've got silicon molds. Okay, what? Screw it, let's try it. Let's try and get through both. So, silicon molds. We have the very famous um, 160 um, ice cube tray molds. If you go to buy these, make sure that they are okay for heat. 
Um, I have various novelty ones. Oh, helps if I actually show them on camera. Um, various novelty ones if I want to make bigger treats um, and things. So we'll leave that one for a second. Oh, actually, I can flip the camera. I've just noticed. There we go. So I make uh, doggy donuts. These are quite big doggy donuts. Um, I got that off Marketplace. Always worth watching on Marketplace because um, resin makers and soap makers, they get rid of these all the time if they stopped doing them or um, don't like it themselves. So um, I always watch for them and I will tell you how to clean them if they have been used for anything else, no problem. These are all my colliery molds. So um, yes, we have water staining. That happens, it's silicon. Shows that they've been washed. Um, but we have dots in two different sizes. Oh no, those are two the same sizes. I must have left my bigger ones at home. Um, we have mini bones, which these are stained a little bit with turmeric. If you do put turmeric in anything, whether you're baking or dehydrating, try and use a darker tray because it hides it better. Um, we've got stars, the other tray of dots, hearts, little fishies. Oh, that one's got dirty in the van. I will rinse it off. Um, mini donuts, medium sized bones, and then I've got some. Oh, there we go. Um, and then I've got some big bones. These are all from Colliery. If you're going to do an order from Colliery, I suggest getting everything that you want in one go because it's rather expensive um, to bring over to the UK um, from Europe just because the mats are decent, so they're a bit heavier. Um, then we have the... This is what most people dehydrate or bake treats in. Pyramid mats. Um, they are actually grease collectors for your oven. Um, but we don't use them that way. Um, which is how the adverts tell you to use them in your oven. We use them this way, which some people do still do in their oven anyway. Um, literally, I'll show you in the dehydrator in a second, in the big beast. Um, I just spread the meat out uh, with rabbit and kangaroo because I know it's not all that liquidy. I will flip it straight onto a tray with one of the solid um, Teflon sheets on so it doesn't stick to the actual tray. For ones that are a bit juicier... Here's the beast. Um, so this is hair, which I deliberately put... And there goes the ears. Um, I deliberately put this in so that you could see when it gets the skin on it. So this is quite a juicy mix. Um, this and the venison that I use are. Um, I put them in and I wait until I've got this skin. And then we drop all the ears on the floor. That is not part of the plan. Get a second tray out and just... Now you can, if you want to, put one of like the mesh sheets on here um, before you flip it out. So if there is any juicy bits that it catches them and you're all good. Um, flip it again. Hopefully you can see this. So lining it up and it is as simple as flip. Then that tray goes back for flipping more or putting the next load on. Um, obviously when you're doing juicier mixes, you can only do so many at a time in the dehydrator um, because you have to wait for this skin to form. It will also grip onto the edge of the mat because um, the edges dry faster. Also be really, really careful. They are actually quite delicate and they rip fairly easily, but that you can tell which one's my first ones that I had. The, this sheet is actually cut um, in two because I got these when I just had this one. Um, so it didn't fit fully in the dehydrator on the shelf. Um, so yeah, I, I cut it to make it work. And now I can put both in my big dehydrator as is. If bits get stuck on like that, don't panic. Just kind of smush it back on and then stick it back in and then that'll get the skin. The um, Kaisbrink mixes tend to take 12-ish hours on average to do um, from start to finish. Obviously, depending on what mix you're using, how much you're doing, depends on how quick you get through it. So for me, because I've got four kilos of each to put in, it's going to take me a while. The rabbit and the kangaroo are getting really, really quickly um, because I can just flip that straight on. I don't put it in the mould, flip it and get it off straight away. I don't have to wait for it to dry out a bit to do it because it doesn't stick to the tray. And again, that's just learnt through experience of um, doing this. Oh, I'm trying really hard to cram everything in. I want to fill a sheet for you so you can see how I do it. A lot of people kind of do it quite religiously and really uniform. I am a slapdash girl because the dogs don't care how thick it is or how neat it is. 
the other advantage of using the pyramid pans is it makes it really easy to um, break up. So you get these little ridges, trying to show it. I don't know if you can see them, um, but you get little ridges on it. So once it's all fully dry, fully dehydrated even, um, makes it super easy to snap. However, if you are using a mince that has bone, mince bone in it, um, be careful because the bone as it dehydrates, yes, it goes powdery, but it can be quite sharp as you're snapping and you can end up with little cuts. Um, so yeah, just worthwhile being careful on that one. Right, here's go out of the way and I'll sort you out in a minute. Let's get this done. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up right now with doing a tray of hair because I, again, I'm not mixing. I have to wash these before I use them again. When it comes to washing your silicon molds after use, put them in the washing machine, literally your washing machine on a spin cycle, rinse and spin. It'll get everything out and it'll move them around more than it does in the dishwasher or by hand washing. Um, sometimes they come out completely clean and you've just kind of got to squirt a little bit of um, washing up liquid in the bowl, give it a shake and then it's done. So with my mints, um, I always empty the packets out straight into a bowl, <coughs> losing my voice. Makes it easier for me to handle um, and a hell of a lot quicker. Um, depending where I'm working, if I was at home, I would do this on my worktop with the pyramid pan straight on it and then kind of scooch it on. But here I'm putting it on the tray first. Um, again, depending on your skill level and how good you are at pulling things without ripping them and all that, um, depends on the easiest way for you to do. So I literally grab some meat and push it in. Some people use spatulas, some people use knives. I am, a, get your hands dirty. They're already dirty anyway, so you might as well carry on and get it done quicker. Sooner it's in, sooner you can flip it out when it's a wet mix. Um, I don't know whether you can actually see that this is quite moist. Um, I'll bring over the kangaroo in a second and you can see the difference quickly before we finish up for this hour. Well, hour and a bit. But yeah, just smushing it in and obviously at the edges, try not to let it hook over the sides because it just makes it easier for when you've got to switch it out. But if it happens, it happens. Okay, you can see how much quicker this is rather than me being completely precise with it, although I'm going probably a bit quicker than usual to try and fit it all in for you. And I'll fill the other one off screen um, when we've finished. I'm just trying to finish it. Oh, can you see? You can't even see, can you? Let's see if this works. Hopefully you don't fall over. Um, yeah, stay. There we go. Hopefully that works. Um, so yeah. Oh God, now it's not showing the corner that I'm doing. Flip the tray around. Okay, can you see now? So yeah, it's literally just smushing it in and being careful at the edges. Even that bit with the split, I hold the split bit in place so it doesn't go through that slit and you can mush it around. I always flatten and give an extra squish once I've done it to try and even out the thickness just a little bit because it will give me a better dehydrating time. And when you do that, you end up moving the meat around in the mold anyway and you end up with bits of excess but it just helps kind of glue it all together. Now I've got a little corner here that's not done, so a tiny little piece, mush it in, and again that corner, and then finishing off this. Okay, do you want me to do the little one on camera quickly now, or seeing as I didn't have the angle before? Um, screw it, phone with hands, let's, there we go. There we go, we can kind of see there. So yeah, it's just literally smushing it in. Lay it out, smush it in. Smush is such a technical term. Um, with dehydrating, I will quickly mention if you do birds, bison, or I can't remember the other one now because I don't do it very often. Um, when it's finished dehydrating, you should put it in your oven on the lowest temperature for kind of three to five minutes. It just makes sure that any residual bacteria on there is killed off. You don't have to do it with anything else. Um, so like the the hair, kangaroo, etc., and everything that I've got in today. 
uh, apart from the testicles and the pizzle, I think that's the only thing I'll need to do it with, um, none of that is a risk um, for carrying any extra bacteria once it's dehydrated. But full details of those are in the dehydrated treats group. Uh, this is when it gets all messy because I'm rushing now to try and cram it more in and not go too far over time for you. So there we go, done. Done on that one. Put that one away. So again, because I've just had um, that and it's a little bit of a messy one, just wiping up, keeping my workspace as clean as I can. And then kangaroo. So kangaroo, it's, you can kind of already see in there, it's a lot drier than this bowl is. This bowl kind of mushes itself in the bowl. This one's staying in its tubes as it came out of the packaging. That's just because it's a drier mix. Um, the drier mixes, as I say, you can put them straight in the mold and flip them out onto the tray without having to mess about waiting, etc., etc. Um, do we have any more questions before I finish up? And what I'll do is I'll quickly call Ruby and see if she wants me to come back on and do finishing off today. Um, but yeah, give you a couple of minutes. Any questions? And as I say, I'll, once everything's dehydrated, I'll take pictures and put it in the group. I've got years of hiding to catch up on on lives. No, I'd say this is a one-off. However, Ruby wants me to do another one on being your authentic self. Can you tell that I'm being my authentic self today? Okay, any questions? And um, we'll end it quickly and then I'll ring Ruby and hopefully we'll come back on and do it as a second part just to make sure that she's cool with it because it's her event. Well, her idea, conference thingy, doofly. No, no questions? What's selfish? Me checking with Ruby? That's me being sensible. <laughs> okay, if we've got no questions, I shall maybe see you back here in a minute, but I'll post in the group if Ruby says um, better to do it another day or whatever. And hopefully we'll see you back here soon. Bye. Bye. Oh, how do I finish it? God, I didn't think about this bit through.